Hi, I'm Jim Campanini, editor of The Sun, and welcome to our latest segment of Sunspot. Uh, as you know, I also write a column in the, uh, the Sun in the Thursday What Do You Want to Do section uh, called Wine Novice, where I highlight uh, some of the wines that are being sold locally in this region and some of the better values. Uh, now, I'm a wine novice, but today, as my guest, we're going to do something different. I actually have a wine expert with me, and he lives right here in Lowell. I want to introduce you to Craig Gandalf. Craig, welcome Hi, to the how show. Are you? Thank you for inviting me. And uh, Craig has lived in Lowell for 14 years, but he's also been the wine director for the Jorge Ordonez Selection Selections Wines of Spain. That's Jorge Ordonez Selections Wines of Spain. He's been the wine director for the entire United States for 19 years. That's pretty, pretty, pretty decent. Mm -hmm. I like that. I wish I was a wine director someplace. <laughs> Be careful of what you wish for. <laughs> you know, in this business, there are a lot of expert uh, uh, wine uh, uh, wine experts who uh, do reviews, and some of them are they're professional reviewers. And one of the best in the business, if not the best, Robert Parker, uh, he can push the market, let me tell you. He does, uh, believe me. <laughs> and, uh, and he came out with some great preliminary reviews, uh, and then they were followed up with outstanding reviews also on the uh, Ordonia Selection wines. And, uh, and, and Craig has been uh, now uh, as as one of the the, the leading uh, uh, persons in the the company. He was willing to share these uh, wines and and why they are so spectacular. And the thing that really got me and why I really wanted to talk to, to Craig not only because he's a great guy, a great Lowellian, uh, but uh, these are value oriented wines. Uh, I mean, they're they're they're, they're spectacular uh, and they're in local stores right now. Where uh, Craig will tell us uh, some places they are. So, uh, so Craig, I don't want to monopolize this, but uh, uh, we're going to go around and go through all these these five wines. So, tell, just tell us briefly what gives these wines uh, their character in distinction. Oh, I think is it the location? I think well, I think any great wine starts in the vineyard and you can't have great wine unless you have a great vineyard and that's something that uh, Jorge Ordonez has been uh, sourcing for the last 20-25 years. Uh, we're looking for vineyards that are old vine vineyards. Uh, we're looking for vineyards in high altitude locations, uh, generally mountainside locations where, where, where the vines are stressed to the, to the maximum. Um, but that, that's where a great wine starts is in the vineyard and then you, you take the grapes from there handle them with a tremendous amount of care, don't manipulate them too much, and make the best wine you can possibly make, but it has to be reflective of the vineyards that it comes from. It's a grape that was uh, near distinction, near extinction, I should say, um, and it was resurrected in the early 1980s uh, by partners of ours at Vigna Godeval, and uh, it makes a, a incredibly intense high acid white wine. Mm. We tame it in, with this bottle by barrel fermenting it and then aging it in new French oak. So it gives a roundness oh. and a richness to it. Mm. It's got great aromas. I can... Uh, mm. Apple, pear? Apple, pears, mm. peaches. So I am learning great. Yes, you yeah. are. You're doing very well. And uh, Ro very Robert Parker c compared this to a Grand Cru Chardonnay from Burgundy. Wow. Uh, and, and look at that color. It's just got uh, a beautiful, uh, a beautiful transparency to it. A little, uh, uh, how would you, how would you describe that? Pale straw. Pale, Pale straw. Pale straw. Yeah. It's not quite green, but it does, it does hint in that direction. Pair this with food with uh, something like shellfish, oysters, or clams on the half shell, or shrimp. Mm. Or I'm as in Galicia, hungry. you would have grilled lobster, but a uh, uh, grilled octopus. I'm sorry, but I don't think that's a popular dish here in Lowell. <laughs> okay, so uh, tell us the, the rating the pocket gave this uh, this wine. This is uh, 92 points, and wow. the previous vintages have all rated between 90 and 92 points. So we have about a six-year stretch of, of getting excellent scores on this wine. Is this uh, an age-worthy wine? This is the 2015, 15. so it's very fresh. 
it's it's ripe fruit that's what it tastes like to me in the glass and uh could, is this something that you could uh, this will certainly age for a good 10 to 15 wow. years and that's that's something for a white mm -hmm. wine so that's uh, it'll that's, develop what we call secondary characteristics yeah uh, along yeah. the way it'll get a uh, mushroom complexity to it as it ages wow so that's pretty that's pretty good that you can put this in the uh, in your cellar if you wanted to. Of but course, drink it now. <laughs> drink it now. Drink yes. It now. Uh, and what would uh, what's the suggested retail price for this? Um, this you should be able to find this in the markets between thirty and thirty five dollars. Welcome back. I'm Jim Campanini here with Craig Grand Gandolf, and uh, right now we're going to get into some of the um, the distinctive uh, red wines that Craig has, uh, has, has brought over to present. Uh, as I, I want to uh, 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 tell our viewers out there, like I do with my uh, readers in my column, notice we have water, okay? <laughs> when you do a wine tasting, you just sip the wine and you pour the rest out, you know, because uh, as these experts do it, uh, you know, they might taste 20 wines sometimes in one sitting. And I always urge my, uh, my uh, readers, you know, to uh, drink plenty of water as you go through the tastings. Yes. Right, Craig? That is the definite. And we have some uh, olives, uh, cheese, and uh, to, to also taste and clear your palate uh, as you do this tasting. So, so, Craig, our first wine, why don't you uh, give us a... Uh, All right. The first wine is called Breca. And it comes from an area of Spain called Calatayud, which is in the northeast central uh, mountain range of Spain, probably about two hours east of, uh, uh, two hours west of Barcelona, two hours east of Madrid, so in, in central plateau area. The average elevation is very, very important because these vineyards are anywhere from 2,900 to 3,300 feet in elevation. So it gets very, very cold in the wintertime. It gets very warm in the summertime, but also during the summertime nights, it gets very cool as well because it's a high arid desert area. Beautiful label. I like that golden yeah. black. Does Breca mean anything in particular? Uh, Breca is a, is a corruption of the name of the village where it's located. It's a Monebritic right there. Yes. There. So the grape? The grape is 100% Grenache. They're all old vines, uh, so the youngest vine would be 60 years old, and the oldest vines would be about 120 years old. And what, when we talk about old vines, we're talking about the grapes having much more concentration than they would have in a younger, uh, younger vine. They produce, each vine produces less clusters, and the fewer clusters that it produces, the more concentration of flavors. Beautiful. I love uh, Tempranillo. It's one of my favorite grapes. Now I'm going to show you what I, I learned in French wine school. I learned how to do this without spilling a drop. The first time I did it, I had a white shirt on. I lost that shirt. But look at that, huh? Unbelievable. <laughs> so now, what are we going to what are we going to? What you're going to notice oh. about a Grenache, uh, and this is something for your your uh, customers to know is that it's a very very accessible grape it's not overly tannic it doesn't have a harsh finish it's normally from this area the grape, the uh, wine is very concentrated in flavors and fruit flavors so the first thing you notice that when you taste the wine is the overabundance of black raspberries mm. and blueberries uh, the finish is very soft subtle but very long lasting, so you don't notice the tannins. They don't. They don't bite you in the back of, uh, back of your tongue. Now you know why I swirl this. There's a reason why you do it, not just to show off like that. Okay. <laughs> no, you're actually releasing uh, the flavors because as it oxidizes, it hits the ear. You you right. You you release yes, some it, of the molecules. Yes. Once the wine stuff. comes in contact with oxygen, the flavors, the aromas will come up in the yeah. glass. Okay. So let's so have a taste. That's why it's important to use a good sized glass rather than something that's small. Mm. It's a very, very versatile wine. Mm. It'll go with red meats, it'll go with pork, it goes with chicken, and you can have it with full flavored fish like uh, such as tuna. Mm. I like it's got a great uh, 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 it's got a great color. Look at that if you can see that that uh, uh, purple uh, color fresh it's it's fresh. It's got a, a grippy uh, the tannins are, are nice but but they're, they're, they're plush we call them plush plush yes. Plush. And uh, the spiciness of it is, is beautiful, overwhelming. I mean, this is, uh, I'd go to this for nice grilled meats, yes. uh, steak, and 
and uh, mm -hmm. even even burgers, right? Yes, uh, the burgers. I use it a lot during the summertime uh, with burgers and patio food, and also during the winter with stews and roasts. Mm. So but as I said, it's very very versatile. Well, but that peppery flavor at the end of yes. that is it's an extraordinary wine. Oh, we're good. extremely proud of this, and we're extremely proud that we can bring it to you for about sixteen dollars uh, retail. So Craig, our second wine is the 2015 Triton Tinta de Toro, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it looks a little darker in color than the last It is. One. There's deeper concentration. These are much older vines, so these vines go up to 140 years old. Uh, and this comes from a different region called Toro, which is in the western part of uh, Spain, just before you get to the Portuguese border. Is that the, where they hold all the bullfights? Toro. Toro. Well, <laughs> no? they they don't necessarily hold the bullfights there, but this is where the bulls come from. Oh, so there are a lot of good. there are a lot of bull farms. Keep watching this show; you'll learn more than about <laughs> why. Okay. Uh, okay. So the distinctive characters, the characteristics to this. This I've always told people and and customers that if they're Cabernet drinkers or Merlot drinkers, that this is the wine that they can go to when they go to Spanish wines because it has the structure and the backbone that you would normally find in a Cabernet or a Bordeaux wine but it has an extraordinary amount of uh, fresh fruit in the beginning. So it's not dry, it's just very, very full, rich bodied mm -hmm. wine, but it does demand having um, a good steak or prime rib with this because mm -hmm. it needs that, that protein to offset the, the rich tannins. And it's a full bodied wine, would you Very full bodied. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that, we're gonna have a little sip here. So you get that mm. white pepper mm. flavor on the finish, which keeps going and going and going. Mm. There's, a, there's a hint of like uh, uh, licorice. Licorice, in there, exactly. Yeah. Yes. Very when this wine opens up, uh, if you kept this open for an hour or so, you would the licorice would come up. You would have a mm. bit of violets and a hint of bitter chocolate in the bitter finish. Bitter chocolate. Yeah. Yeah. How, is this uh, oaked? They must oak this in... Uh, yes, this is this is aged this for six months in French oak. Yeah, because it had that, it's got a nice smooth creamy, almost like a creamy finish mm -hmm. to it. Exactly. Uh, very good. And, and I tell you, we, we've said, well now, two of these reds, very, very smooth. Yes, you know, we. I always, when we blend the grapes, and that's something that we didn't discuss earlier, but when Jorge and I go to Spain to do the blending, we always want the wines to be drinkable as soon as they're released. Many times you'll, you'll hear uh, winemakers or wineries say, oh, you should put this down for 10 or 15 years before you can drink it. We don't want the consumer to do that. We want the consumer to be able to drink it now and also have the option of laying it down where it'll only improve. Well, Craig, what we really want to know, give us the good news. What is the score, Robert Parker's score, and the price? The Parker scores, we were actually amazed ourselves this year. We got 94 points from Robert Parker, which is extraordinary. It's like getting an A+, plus and that, uh, that's on a 100-point uh, uh, rating. And the price is just under $20 a bottle. That is, that's phenomenal. Yeah. I, mean, where, I mean, where could you get a 94-point <laughs> rated wine for 20 bucks? Well, you could, you could go to Bordeaux and get 94-rated mm -hmm. wine, but you'd be paying $500 a bottle. So the choice is up to you. <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's an outstanding value, folks. Uh, fantastic. It, Third wine is uh, is one of the most uh, exceptional in your uh, catalog. Uh, yes. Think, just looking at this, uh, and it's a it's a red blend. You want to mm -hmm. describe it for us and tell the people. Basically, uh, people know the area of Rioja. So this comes from Rioja, which is probably the most famous wine region in Spain. It's to the north central part of Spain, about two hours north of Madrid and about an hour south of the Atlantic Ocean. The uh, Bodegas Muga has been in business since 1932 and is probably the most traditional of all wineries within Spain. There's no, I'm sure in other discussions you've talked about stainless steel fermentation mm -hmm. and stainless steel tanks. Everything here is done in oak, so there's no stainless steel. They make all their vats and barrels on premise. They actually buy, they actually go to France to buy the trees and come to the United States, to Missouri in particular, pick out the individual trees, then have them shipped back to Spain. 
they age them for four to five years at the winery and then make barrels and, and vats out of them. Okay, and the oak, that, that's going to impart enhanced flavors, yes. other characteristics, mm -hmm. a little toastiness, sometimes vanilla, right? Is a it? lot of complex flavors come out of the oak, and what goes into the oak is the harshness from the wine, the high tannins, the high acidity. So the oak balances that, and in return gives you spices like vanilla, cinnamon, nutmeg, and a bit of uh, toasted bread. Mm. You get that. And, and to think that they have to wait five years before <laughs> they can get any return on their investment. But this is the best part. It's rated 96 points. Tell us the price. The price, uh, the suggested retail price would be about $75. So it's not an everyday bottle of wine, but mm. for those that time when you're having the boss coming over for dinner or want to enjoy a beautiful rack of lamb, this is the wine to go for. Yeah. I mean, just think about it. Those people who produce this wine have to wait five to six years to get a return on them. Craig, this is one of the few shows I would hope that never had to end, <laughs> you know. But uh, here we are in the pergola, and uh, we're going to try this beautiful dessert wine. Um, why don't you tell us a little about this? Because this, okay. this is one of the most extraordinary dessert wines that uh, I've read about. Well, af after the, the big reds that we were just tasting, I had to come up with a, something mm. to finish on a, on a bang. So I said, well, I'll, I'll, do, I'll do the Victoria. It, uh, this uh, wine comes from Malaga, which is in the s southernmost part of Spain, just before you get to Africa. These grapes were came to Malaga 3,000 years ago, brought there by the Venetians. So the grape variety is called Muscat de Alexandria, from Alexandria, Egypt. And this is the same, we, we've done DNA on these clones to, to make sure that they match the same clones that are in Alexandria, Egypt. So there's been 3,000 years of uninterrupted cultivation in this area. So, is this a, a fortified wine? Would you describe that? Uh, uh, no, it's not. It, okay. it, it's a natural wine. So it, it achieves its sugars and its alcohol naturally. There's nothing added to it. Nothing is done to prevent the fermentation of it, which we do for fortified wines. Fortified wines connote the fact that you add alcohol okay. to stop the fermentation. These are all fermented naturally. Okay, and explain to our view viewers uh, a dessert wine. This is something you'd serve after the meal uh, with uh, sweets, dolce. You and Italian, well, huh? it, it works several different ways. Mm -hmm. You could serve it with. Uh, it is sweet by itself, mm -hmm. but because it's sweet, it also lends itself to different applications. You could have it at the beginning of the meal if you're having mm -hmm. a foie gras. Saute. Think of. Think of. <laughs> think of foie gras. Sautéed foie gras with this wine. It also goes well with beautiful cheeses, uh, right, full body cheeses like blue cheeses. Yet it perfectly complements something like a key lime pie or a baked apricot tart. I'm hanging with the wrong crowd, I tell you. I gotta get into this, uh, into Craig's crowd, I tell you. But uh, it has a, a distinctive, oh, beautiful, nice aroma. I smell a lot of, uh, like honey peach, um, mm -hmm. Melons, honeysuckle. Melons, honeysuckle, that's what it must be. Yeah, what, what, it what did Robert Parker say about this? This wine got 95 points, uh, and it was uh, this wine uh, two years ago was the first wine, first Spanish wine ever served at a Nobel Peace Prize dinner. So it's gotten a lot of international recognition. On this great. You know, the price on this would be about 19 to 20 dollars. That's and it takes seven kilos or about 15 pounds of grapes to make that one bottle of wine. Wow, okay. We're gonna taste it. Can I describe that is how? luscious. I should also describe how we oh. make this wine. The, the grapes are harvested at full maturity and then we take them into a barn so they're air dried until they're raisins and then we crush it to make That's the wine. Okay. So that process is almost a little like what they, how they, the Italians make amarone. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, so the, the, the grapes are taken out, they're resonated and, uh, and put out on what, mats? Or mats. Mats, yeah. Unbelievable. You know, uh, you learn so much about the world through wine. And that's what was really fascinated me when I first got involved in, in, 
taking my classes and studying and meeting uh, wonderful people like like Craig. And I always say this to my uh, to my readers and people that I meet. Uh, you know, it's great to explore. It's great to discover. You know, these different things and different wines. Uh, I would have never had a a, a dessert wine uh, four or five years ago, and now. Um, they're, they're just a great accompaniment. Uh, you have guests over and to, to make them taste something different and try something different. Once again, this is a, a, a fabulous, fabulous uh, uh, experience. And I, I, uh, I would uh, encourage anyone, anyone to go out there and, you know, try it. Just try it once. If you don't like it, you don't have to try it again. But I'll tell you, uh, this would... Uh, if you're having a holiday party coming up or even Thanksgiving or something and you really wanted to wow the crowd, take out something like this and uh, really make an impression. Would you agree? I would agree wholeheartedly. And as we say in Spain, a salud. A salud. <laughs>